right, hello, Tide fans. Welcome to Tide Talk. I'm your host, Sean Taylor. Got my buddy Jimmy with us. Not sure how long he's going to be able to make it. He's still battling some cough going on. Maurice joining us on Zoom down in Panama City Beach. Hey, Maurice. Good to see hello, you. Hello, hello, hello. Good, good to, to be see seen. Say that again. It's good to be seen. Right? I, I'm, right. It's always a pleasure seeing you in that sunshine state with the pool in the background and the palm trees. I mean, Hey, somebody's got to keep the population up, and that's, that's what I'm doing. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Well, so that we can take care of Jimmy, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, you know, Maurice, we, you know, the last couple of shows, few shows, it's been me and you. You know, Jimmy's back. Of course, we always talk through text. I was just telling the, the producer and, and Jimmy, Colson and I went to the football game, and I – it was loud from the beginning, but in the fourth quarter, it was so loud that you could not talk to the person next to you. It, it was it yep. was it was insanely loud. That's the way it should be, shouldn't it? Which is the way that it should yeah. be, especially when we finally got the defensive turnover when Arnold gets the pick. And I believe I read something that said it was like. The decibel was 113.1 or something like that. Man, the place exploded. I mean, it was really, really crazy. But what a great environment, great football game, kind of what we anticipated. Um, I, I was really hoping that we would have been able to get more stops on Jaden Daniels. You know, we knew he was a really good player, but he, he, I got to see it live uh, and in person. Uh, the, the guy's good. But we got enough stops to do what we needed to do. And I guess contrary to what a lot of people thought, they weren't sure that we would be able to match them scoring. And we did that. And so, yeah. man, what a big win. Um, can't say enough about the fact that for the first time, and, and even Saban referenced maybe – the most complete game that we've played to this point. Can't say enough about the battle that the defense had. I mean, they were battling, dude. I mean, the whole game, they were battling. And uh, just really excited about the win, about the position that that puts us going forward. You know, Jimmy, you had not been here in a while, and, and there's no old, you know, telling how long you're going to be able to talk. But just give us, you know, give us your thoughts on the game. I, you know, we were texting a little bit back and forth, but give us your thoughts on the game. Um, I, I, I thought it was the most complete game we played, my, minus a couple of missed kicks. <laughs> yeah, um, I love to say Yeah, really. Um, the play you mentioned, obviously, was the play of the game. It turned everything. I mean, that, that was exactly what we needed. The time we needed it, you know, we had just gone ahead. Um, it was a lot of fun. But, man, I, I knew – I mean, I know I wasn't here to make predictions and talk about it, but I knew it was going to be a, a challenge trying to stop them. Absolutely. Um, and and I knew they were going to get theirs. And so, fortunately, like I say, that second half, you know, we were able to make the plays that, that we were needing to make. And um, – but, yes, I agree. I think it was one of our most complete games. Maurice, I know we lost you there for just a second, but I'm – Jimmy just basically – Her game. The, the turning point yeah. of the game – he thought was the the interception, and of course I know that was huge. But I want to hear from you what you thought, and then I'm going to give you my two cents on what I thought was the turning point in the game. Maurice, what, what do you think was the turning point in that ball game? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I would say the third down uh, run touchdown by Milrow. Uh, and what I mean by that, yeah, the interception was huge. But I think that put um extreme amount of confidence in in Jalen and also set the team, let the team know, hey, we can we can slug with you. We're gonna be here. We're not going anywhere, we're not backing down. I thought that was a huge play. I thought, you know, I, I think that was a turning point as far as building confidence and knowing that this is going to be our day. So can't talk enough about Jalen Milrow in this game. We're going to talk about that, but I'm going to tell you what I thought was the turning point in the game. It's, Let's hear it. It's second half, 
and they are going to the north end zone. We're sitting on the 30 yard line. So they're going away from us. And the play is right in front of us. Third down. We're on defense. And finally, we get a holding call. They've been holding yeah. us all night. I, Colson and I were literally yelling like you got to be kidding me because there were some that were so obvious. Now, the one that they called, in my opinion, was not as bad as some of the ones that I felt like they missed. But if you the, the game at the time was tied at 28. And in that play, Daniels runs for 20 yards, if I'm not mistaken, picks up the first down, yet it's negated because of the holding call on Dallas Turner. And we end up stopping them on that drive. They throw a ball out to the to the right, and they're very short. They have to punt. And then we come down and score and take the lead. And I believe that was the turning point in the game. If that play is not called back, they continue with momentum. They pick up another first down. And who knows what happens from there if they go ahead. Now, of course, we've been matching them score for score, but they go ahead and it just creates a different scenario. And I think, in my opinion, that was the turning point of the game. And it was kind of something that didn't talk about a lot, but it was a huge call that they finally made. As I said, man, if you go back and watch that game, Tim Smith, number 50, was getting held all night long. And I'm not talking about just a little hold. I mean, turning his shoulders completely, dragging him, you know. And, and so finally get a call, and, and it was huge. It was a big point in the game. It was a big stop that we get. And then we go down and score, and we take the lead. And, and to your point, Maurice, a little bit more confidence that, hey, we can score with you. you you're the best, yeah. one of the best offenses in the country, but we're matching you score for score. And, oh, by the way, our quarterback's pretty good with his legs, too. Maurice? Uh, who, who would ever thought that we would have seen in, uh, in this day and age uh, uh, SEC matchup and the two leading rushers for the quarterback? And I'm not talking – by a couple of yards. I mean, both of those kids played their hearts out. And it was really, and Jaden Daniels really impressed me. I hope he's doing all right. Concussion protocol, which I, I thought was, um, it was, he, he landed on it. I don't think there was any, anything egregious uh, about the hit. I'm sorry to go off on that. But, um, you know, there's, there is a reason that, you know, LSU is the, uh, is the team that ha has the least punts uh, in college right now because that offense is incredible. And I think we did one hell of a job. And, uh, yeah, 28 points is a good bit of points. But that defense, uh, after the uh, first drive um, in the third quarter, they, they made the adjustments, and it was it was night-night. And, you know, I was texting throughout – the game saying who's going to get the ball last. That's what it felt like. I mean, and that's really what it was until we, you know, finally get the defensive turnover, you know, great field position. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was exactly that. It was, man, it was a great football game. You know, again, I'm a, I hate it that Daniels got hurt as well, but there's a, been a lot of conversation. If you guys have seen, I'm sure you've read about that hit and, you know, We'll, we'll come back and talk about that. We're going to go to a break, but, you know, I want to get your thoughts on on the hit. I want to get your thoughts on, you know, where you guys think that that places it with respect to the history books because there's a lot of people talking about, you know, kind of another Daniel Moore painting and that sort of thing. So uh, let's hold on. We'll come back and talk about that. Hold your seats, Tide fans. We'll be right back with Tide Talk. Beam wins it on the last second kickoff return, and it's all thanks to the Big G. He's only about a foot tall, and he's not great at catching since he doesn't have any arms. But boy, when he does, he's end-to-end -end in a blink thanks to that one gig speed that makes him so special. You can tell his teammates just love playing with him. Maybe a little too much. Gig speed from Bean, made for football, available everywhere. All right, welcome back, Todd fans. You know, Maurice, Jimmy, we were just talking right there at the end, just the, the hit that Dallas Turner put on Jake Daniels. 
you know, several people, writers are talking about, man, that's going to be another Daniel Moore painting. And we, you know, that's kind of how Alabama football is supposed to be and, and known for and that sort of thing. A lot of controversy about that with respect to was it targeting, was it not? Several people saying that it's not targeting. I'm going to start with you, Jimmy. You know, what what, what was your thought initially? Because you were there, you got to saw the, the review. I mean, what did you think? So I'll, I'll say this, you know, that's how we were taught growing up Absolutely. to make a tackle. I mean, he led with his face mask. He led, his face was up, his head was up, hit him basically in his chest, wrapped up, took him to the ground. Now, in today's football, that's, you know, personal foul. Could it have been called targeting? Maybe. Um, obviously, they reviewed it and didn't. Um, but I think it's crazy to think that it was a dirty play. I mean, it's, oh, how, yeah. it, it's how, we again, we were taught to, to play football back in the day. I mean, it wasn't that long ago you could tackle somebody like that and nobody would say anything. So, um, again, I, I didn't think it was dirty. It, it was called a foul. I mean, or the flag was thrown. So, so be it, you know, yeah. you know and move on. Maurice? <clears throat> yes. What, what you, you got anything to add to that? <clears throat> I I don't think, well, it wasn't targeting, in my opinion. It could have been uh, easily defined as roughing the passer just because uh, Dallas Turner's body, his weight, landed on top of Daniels, basically driving him into the ground. And, you know, a lot of times, I don't care what the officials say, it's going to depend on the game situation and the player of whom it's happening to. Uh, Jaden Daniels, uh, number one quarterback in the country, pass efficiency right now, I think third or fourth in Heisman odds. So, yeah, he's going to get the luxury of some calls. I don't think there was anything malicious about it. Um, it was just unfortunate, to, you know, how he landed. And, I mean, I'd have to go back and look again. Was it the ground? I don't think it was. Uh, I've watched it Dallas numerous Turner's times. Contact. Huh? I've watched it numerous times. Okay, so is it Dallas Turner? If if you were watching, you just had to make a fan's guess. Would it be Dallas Turner's helmet that hit Jaden Daniels' helmet that caused the concussion, or would it be Daniels' head hitting the ground that caused the concussion? I mean, there's there's you know, listen, it wasn't a late hit. You know, right. it was roughing the passer because of how they landed. But yes. if you go and watch the hit, he initially hits him with his face mask in the chest. But because of the force, he slides up and the top of his helmet hits Jaden Daniels under the <clears throat> under the face mask, under the you know, on the chin. And then he lands on. So I would, I would argue to say if Dallas doesn't land on, you get no call. Correct. So if he was able to keep his feet. Yeah. He didn't leave with his crown. He didn't leave his feet. You know, he didn't. You know, uh, what do they call it? Um, not eject, but he he didn't launch his eject body. His body. He, you know, right. so right. man, it was a a hard hit. Yes. Was it against their quarterback? Yes. But I do not believe it was dirty. I do not believe it was targeting. And not just because it was Alabama guy. I've, I've watched it over and over again. You know, at the end of the day, if it was, at that point, I really don't know that it mattered. You know, we're up 14. You know, the way that we had been playing, um, I just don't think that it would have mattered. Kudos to our DBs, man, Terry on Arnold is legit. Caleb Downs is legit. Of course, Kool-Aid exactly. Kool is legit. Secondary did a fantastic job. And, and listen, I got to say it. There was, say one it. Play, there was one play that they scored where uh, Trayvon Marshall, the linebacker, was in the game. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but they pulled him. And in comes Jaheed Campbell. <laughs> And and I'm, I'm telling you that Joker's the next real deal. Are we talking about the play that we're going to lead into, where um, it was their um, second touchdown, I believe, that I asked to pull? Is uh, that's when we walked the linebacker 
out onto a wide receiver. Um, Let's go ahead and look and at I that. Believe you want to go ahead and break that down? Right. I think they have um, a clip for us that you had requested. But, but yeah, yeah listen, I mean, I, I kept saying, man, put 30 back in the game. I mean, and let him, and especially when Lawson kind of went out with, with that injury, I mean, you know, he was the one calling the plays for us, and, and he and Marshall were kind of working together, but he, he's for real. Maurice, can you see that? I can. All right. Let's see if we can get the one you're referencing. Yeah, he said he can see it. Thank you. Okay, this, yes, uh, this was the play that I was talking about. Listen, watch. Marshall fills the hole correctly. He fills the hole correctly. He just misses the tackle right there. Yes. Uh, yeah. If, we, if you go back, go back to the beginning of it. You see that we walk. We they shift. They had shift before this. We walk the linebacker out, and now we have to come up with a safety for run support. Seventeen makes a bad angle. Yeah. And allows Daniels to score. Yeah. So it, I don't blame. I don't blame it on Kevin Steele. Uh, they just caught us and see no motion. Walk out. Now we're weak. He knows that he's got one on one. He sees. He sees the bad yeah. angle. Step, step, steps around, and we got. They got touchdown. Yeah, and, so. and again, that was Marshall. And, and Marshall's a good player. Don't get me wrong. I mean, but and I, I, just the way that Campbell's been playing the game lately, I just believe he makes that tackle. He, he's he's shown me that he's going to make that tackle. Maurice, was this the other one that you wanted to see? Well, that's one, of, that's one I was telling you that I think was a game changer for us. This is where Milrow just really says, I'm taking the game right here. And when he does that fake and then he, he bursts into speed. Now here – this is the one that really irritated me because um, our safety back there doesn't have his head in the game. They have uh, LSU has no timeouts left, 13 seconds left. Make the tackle, and they maybe they can kick a field goal. I doubt it, but go ahead and run it. I mean, to me, when he threw it, I was like, "That's a mistake," and we did a poor job of trying to tackle, and he gets in, you know, what, like seven seconds left. You remember, Mo, yeah. Christian Story had gone in there. I think that's who that was because Key had gotten hurt. And I think it was after this play that we moved, put Malachi Moore mm. in the safety spot and moved Harry on Arnold to the star. And Amos came, and yeah. Amos came in and played corner. Yeah, I, listen. And, it's, and, and Saban talked about it at halftime, I believe, is like, you know, we made that tackle basically understanding where we are. You know, when you come into a game, understand everything that's going on around you, how many timeouts, what the situation is. And obviously he didn't. He got a little greedy and tried to go for the ball. All you got to do is make a tackle. And, you know, best that they can do at that point is maybe three. I don't even know if they'd get a playoff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, look, we, there was a couple there, – there were several missed tackles. We, we you know, we – Missed several tackles throughout the game. I, I, you know, I don't know, you know, if that was just, you know, trying too hard, overrunning, you know, not shuffling your feet and breaking down and making a tackle. You know, I know one time, look, you know, the reality is I thought Deontay also broke, broke his ankle. You know, Jaden Daniels came yeah. up there. And, and, and it's difficult yeah. being in open field with a guy that can run like that and, and you're trying to make that tackle. And there wasn't nobody else around them. It was just those two, and he made a good move. Uh, but he made a move where he didn't even touch him. So, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was worried too. I was worried too that when he went down and did that fake, was that a knee or an ankle that's going to be hurt? And thankfully, yeah. he was okay. Yeah, we um. But, but listen, at the end of the day, we we did regroup after that play where they scored the touchdown late. We did regroup, and we were able to make. Some big stops. Thought our defensive line played a fantastic game. We were able to get some pressure, but he's a hard guy to contain. If you give him a little bit of space, he's gone. Jalen Milrow the same way. He, he, you know, he had some opportunities where he got to show off his legs, and he did it correctly. And there's no stopping him in the open field. 
they're and if you go back and notice in, in, in that second half we we kept him more so we squeezed the pocket we didn't try to yeah. rush it keep him back there keep him from running so make him beat him with you know his arm not his legs because he's proven he can beat him i'm gonna tell you something that colson i don't know if you guys saw this too colson my son pointed this out here in the game there was a point where Roy Dill Williams was not going to be stopped in, in the second half. And I'm like, feed that joker the football. And I mean, he was he ran hard. He 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 ran hard. He was hitting holes hard. Um, and, and that was a that was a, a lift. It was a different look, you know, taking nothing away from Jace McClellan. I think they're an excellent combo. But at, at one point, Williams was absolutely running with a chip on his shoulder. And our offensive line started feeding off that. I, you guys maybe didn't see it, but they were – the offensive line, you know, when they come off to the sideline, they got two areas where they sit. They were right in front of us. And, man, I'm telling you, J.C. Latham, Proctor, McLaughlin, man, they were – man, they were yelling and fired up. And, you know, it, it was in, it was good to see because they were feeding off of that. And it just kind of set the tone for the rest of the game, especially the fourth quarter. Hold, hold that thought. Okay. We're going to take another quick okay. break. We'll come back and, and talk a little bit more about that game and then get into this big game coming up at Kentucky. So hold your seats, Tide fans. We'll be right back with Tide Talk. Bean wins it on a last-second kickoff return. And it's all thanks to the Big G. He's only about a foot tall, and he's not great at catching since he doesn't have any arms. But boy, when he does, he's end-to-end -end in a blink thanks to that one gig speed that makes him so special. You can tell his teammates just love playing with him. Maybe a little too much. Gig speed from Beam, made for football, available everywhere. All right, welcome back, Todd fans. Uh you know, again, Maurice right there, we are just talking about just how the, the running game was so impressive. The offensive line grew up a little bit on Saturday night, I believe. I started not just because I was there or maybe because I was there, I was able to see them on the sideline and kind of just their, you know, they were talking to each other and, and they were high-fiving and there were tons of energy um, and, and, and they were wanting for us to run the football because they felt like they had the upper hand, and it was clear based on our production, but both Milro, McClellan, and Williams. Did you guys see, maybe it's a little different look from, from the TV view versus the field view, but did you guys see anything any different? How did you think our offensive line did, Maurice? Well, I thought our offensive guards had a phenomenal night. Um, center as well, but more so the guards. Guards don't get enough credit. Tackles get all the attention. But they played a phenomenal job uh, coming off and uh, a couple times scraping off the nose guard and hitting the linebacker, stealing it. Uh, I thought they did a phenomenal job. And I think they kind of set the tone all night. And they were wanting, you know, just like you were saying, Williams was wanting the ball. They were wanting to run a lot. Uh, I got that feeling. Now, I'm going to not, you know, rain on their parade. LSU's defensive line is not the strongest yeah. in the country. Agreed. Agreed. So uh, I've seen a lot of articles this week, and I'm like, let's pump the brakes. They had about three or four injuries on that defense, and a few, I think a couple others went out during it. So um, they did play good. A little different challenge come Saturday that I did a little research on. But yeah, agreed. Yeah, I can get to it. Man, I want to go back to our quarterback. He actually did something this past Saturday that no Alabama quarterback has ever done in the history of Alabama. Can you tell me what that was, Mo? Four rushing touchdowns. Touchdowns. He had over 200 yards passing, over 150 yards rushing. And, man, when he ran the ball, son, he ran it with a purpose. He was explosive. When he wanted to get up the field, he got up the field. And, man, it was – I mean, that – Jalen Miro could absolutely – Take us to the promised land. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, granted, he, he missed some passes. You know, he still held the ball. Boy, did he. That's, you know, I think those sacks were basically on him. But, I mean, that, that was – that that Jalen Milro is good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean – Yeah, well, and, and, and then I got a comment that, that kudos to Tommy Reese for, for – 
the design runs that we had. The first touchdown was a design run, very well blocked on the edge by the tight end. I thought was extremely well designed because once Bill Road got to the edge, you, you weren't going to catch him. And, and man, so kudos to Tommy Reese for the, the game that he had because maybe he recognized that too and saw that we could take advantage of that. And clearly we did with, you know, the quarterback rushing for four touchdowns first time in the history of Alabama football. So, you know, very impressive. He hey, struggled. can we get five to 45? But then he made some intermediate passes that he's been struggling with. The, the only one that I thought was really bad was the touchdown over there in the corner that was wide open. And he was, you know, he was rolling and he was going to run and he could have ran, but the guy's standing over there by himself and he throws it over his head. Over his fingers. Turns around the next play and, and runs it in for a touchdown. So he makes up for it. But he, he's growing. He, he's getting better. I think we are recognizing some 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 plays to put him in where he can have success. Uh, you know, I, I think it's positive. At the end of the day, I think it's positive. I agree, Jimmy. If he plays like that, it's going to be very tough for defenses to, to plan and, and stop that. It didn't matter if you got a spy. They were trying to put for, you know, Kirk Pearson, who's, man, a phenomenal player, but he recognized also that Jalen Milrow's the real deal. The touchdown that he ran in the end zone near us and, you know, person or Pearson hits him and he just kind of shrugs him off. <laughs> I'm like, that's a grown man you're trying to tackle running a 4-4-4. So, um, you know, Maurice, I'm kind of excited about just the confidence that that gives Milrow, the confidence that it gives the offensive line who's, you know, protecting him and preparing those running lanes. Uh, hopefully we'll see that as we go forward, because Maurice, I agree, this week's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this offense, as you know, David always talks about for a team, but this offense is finding its identity. And to your point, yeah, they they feel it when they, you know, certain plays called. This is how they want to block it, and this is how confident they feel. I guess trying to say forty-five needs to get some love because he's every time he comes in there. He's impactful on, on some block. And uh, the tight end was it nine block. Yeah, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, he he's a phenomenal. He does a hell of a job blocking. I mean, he's a great receiver, but he does a really good job blocking. And this week against Kentucky, not a great pass defense as far as ints, but uh, not bad in sacks. I think they get about two and a half per game. Uh, but their run defense is stout, and they're coached by you know Mark Stoops, uh, Stoops family, great defensive minds. So for everybody that's going to be yelling on Saturday, run the ball, run the ball. How come we can't run the ball? You know, it's going to be facing a pretty good rushing defense. So the key this week is going to be in the air, I believe. Well, I'll tell you, and Jimmy, you can agree or not. I think that you will. They've got a lot more to prepare for. I, I'm, I'm telling you, when, when you've got a quarterback that can run the way Milro displayed Saturday night, that just presents more issues for the defensive coordinator. Because you got to account for that. Because on top of the can run, he's so fast, you can't give him a whole lot of space. He'll hurt you badly. And then, of course, you got to be able to stop just the, the the zones and the and the you know the counters that we run. So uh, I'm 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 anxious to see how we respond to two big wins, Tennessee and LSU. Now we go on the road. We've got our future in front of us, and I'm interested to see how we respond as a team. Do we go back to, yep, we're Alabama, that's us, or do we go back to this team still, you know, scratching and clawing and wanting to prove why they should be in the playoff, you know, picture? Well, you know, typically for most college programs, college football teams, you know, this is that game where you, you almost expect it to be a little sloppy to start with coming off that emotion you win. I mean, I think the coaches will have us ready, but again, mentally, where the player is going to be. I mean, you come off, like you said, 
two big emotional wins. <clears throat> and you have to go on the road. Kentucky is a different challenge. I mean, they're, I mean, they're a good football team. I mean, nothing like what we played. Um, they're going to present some different challenges, like you mentioned already. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be interested to see how how we how we how we're prepared and how we show up and play. Maurice, Kentucky at home, twelve o'clock kickoff. What's 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 your prediction? Uh, I think we are going to do the stereotypical flat. Um, the old bet, betting adage is big home win. Uh, next game is a road game. Teams not going to show up in full force. We'll probably be flat. Now I can see us doing a late cover, but there's going to be some frustration. There's going to be it's going to be probably closed until about the fourth quarter. I think we win by about thirteen. Line is eleven. Is that correct, Jimmy? Yes. Yeah, I think that's right. So, so I would I'm going to say thirteen, but it's going to be a lot closer than people expect. Okay. Yeah. I mean, their offense doesn't scare me at all. Um, no, they have. They have a running back, and that's about it. Ray Davis, and he got most of his yards against Florida one yeah, game. So, I mean, their offense doesn't scare me. I, again, I love the way our defense is playing. I think we're going to ride a little momentum. Yeah, I think it will be a – we can get off to a slow start. I'm like Mo. I think we'll have a late cover. Um, I, you know, prediction-wise, I think it'll be like a 31 to 14 or 31 to 17 kind of game. I think our kicker bounces back, makes a couple kicks for us, and we cover. Maurice, give me a, give me a score. Uh, what did Jimmy say? He said 31 17. What was it? 31 17. Balance. I'm gonna say uh 32 16. All right, how about that? So, <laughs> you guys believe we'll cover? Uh, you believe we'll win? Uh, no, we'll, we'll cover. We'll cover. You, we'll cover. you do believe we'll, we'll have a, a little bit of a lag, maybe a slow start. I, I'm anticipating Sorry, that, that, that that game. We just continue to roll. I'm anticipating that that Saban's telling them you can't afford a letdown because Kentucky will beat you otherwise. You tell me to hold on. In your pocket. Two things. No, two things. Uh, we're playing for the you know win here. We get the West, right? Correct. Second thing is, is if we come out like you're saying that we will, although it's a road game, early kickoff, which is never good for the visiting. Wow. But oh, if yeah. we come out like you're saying. Uh, college football committee, you you need to take note and forget about September 9th. That so again, this is a, this I is a team. That that our way. guys are being told that they can't afford to come out because we're number eight. We And everybody in front of us has won. There, there is no, hey, we win by three. Game. We win by three. We, we've got to get some style points. And I That's right. Guys are going to see that. I believe we're going to have momentum, and I'm going to tell you it's going to be 42-17. I, I believe we're going to show people that we are in the conversation. That, that's my take. I, I, I agree with you 100%. If they come out flexing, then, then yeah, uh, this I think it there's a log jam right now. Somebody's got to lose in front of us. Absolutely. And, uh, or play flat and and. And every week there's little hints at it, but nothing. But we can't afford to come, like you said, to your point. We cannot come out flat and expect to. Well, we've only lost one game. We need to move up. No, yep. got to be some style involved. I believe we got to show them something, and I think we will. So, regardless, we'll come back right here next week. We'll talk about it on Channel 207. Thanks, Ty fans, for joining us every week. We'll be here at 6:30 on Thursday night. Uh, Channel 207. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.